with LinkedIn with this great commodity, right, of toilet paper, which was in such shortage. Um, but, but some of the statistics that are worth noting, and this is one of the ones that really most people don't pay attention to, 90% of the people that are on LinkedIn are also on Facebook. I'm curious, are most of you on Facebook? My guess is that you are, right? Yeah. And 94% of B2B marketers are using uh, LinkedIn to push out their social content. So, you know, all of this, and just know that every second, two new people are jumping on LinkedIn. So the simple system that I developed that generated a six-figure income for me, but has done it for so many of my clients, and it's very, very simple, is called Present Prospect Profit. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to show you some real examples. You can ask questions, and uh, let me show you. So just a couple more facts that I want you to know. Posting is one of the best things that you can do if you want to stay top of mind with people. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But again, you want to know also that 53% of people are going to look at you on mobile. So take a look at your profile on mobile, the way you can see mine is, and make sure that you are showing up the way that you want your prospects and referral partners to see you. And you may not know this, but John, this is a new thing that just happened three days ago on LinkedIn. So you can see here in my headline that I have more than the 120 characters that most people have. Have you guys ever seen a LinkedIn headline and it's only about two lines long? Mm -hmm. Well, now you can double it to 240 characters. And what that means for you is that you can put more keywords in there and you can get found faster. So it's a very, very nice change that LinkedIn made. And when you're posting, that's one of the ways that you can actually book appointments because when you interact with the people that like your posts, watch out, you can keep your appointment calendar filled. So, I, you know, I like, one of my friends, um, Stacey O'Byrne came up with this expression and it said, make your ass bigger than your butt. So I always believe that social proof is more, I could tell you anything, but I'd rather let Charlie tell it to you. And just by doing what I had shared with him and his profile, he had a 33% increase in five days. Now, if you could increase the number of views, how many appointments could you get? Quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. But this is what I see in so many profiles. People are in witness protection. They can't find them. Now, this guy is actually a very big attorney in San Diego. But let's look at what isn't happening. He has the blue banner. That's what LinkedIn defaults to. And he could have an opportunity there to put up a banner similar to what I'll show you, which you know John did and I've done, um, where you're actually branded. So what should be there is the same kind of branding that you have on your website, that you have in your other social media. And then is anybody ever going to find this guy, attorney? How many attorneys are there in the country? Oh my goodness, it's crazy, right? And then he's not even really working it. He's got 221 connections. So I like to say he's in LinkedIn witness protection. However, oh, and check this out. Not only is he hiding, but he's sending people to his competitors. It says people also viewed. That's a default setting where what happens, and I know there's somebody here who has an acupuncture clinic. Well, chances are with an acupuncture clinic, they're going to list, because you have no control over that, how many other people are like you. And so one quick of the question uh, sure. for you yeah. is, because um, I noticed that in my own profile, is- And we changed it, so we can We can change that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I see my own profile, but I, the other clients, so you can actually, I forget, even forget. So you just go, yeah, it's in the, it's in the privacy settings. And um, one of the things that's changing right now is right now it only shows 10 people on um, the people also viewed. And that's actually going to change to 20. And the reason for that is remember Microsoft bought LinkedIn in 2015 for like 26 point something billion dollars. So they want you to stay on LinkedIn. You know, the longer you're on there, there's a better chance that you're going to want to use some of their paid services. So this is how you, this is exactly what you do not want to do. Okay. So here's the challenge. Most experts show up on LinkedIn like amateurs, but they're really professional. So here's Chris. He's a client of mine. And this guy actually owns a company. If you've ever been to an NFL stadium and hopefully you will again one day or a restaurant that has a misting system, 
His company has put those in. He's done almost every NFL stadium in the country. So imagine somebody referred you to Chris and you looked at his profile. Is this going to give you the confidence to want to work with him? First thing is his head is cut off. Second, you have the name of his company and that's it. There's nothing there that would give you any confidence to say, yeah, I want to call him. I want to do business with him. Now look at it. Now we see, okay, this guy is actually an MBA. He's a smart guy. Look at his branding on here. You can see what he does. You can see his logo, his phone number. And here's all his keywords. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for Chris, he does misting fans, misting systems, outdoor and event cool. There's his phone number. You also will see he has the little gold button right here. What does that tell you? It tells you he's using the paid version. That means he's not in long-term parking on LinkedIn. There's a fairly good chance that if you send a message to him, he's going to pay attention. So, you know, it's kind of like I say, it's going to a black tie event and you're wearing your running clothes. You're not dressed for the dance. And the truth is that so many people are, you know, extremely the best. You're the only logical choice, but you're not showing up that way. So here's John. Now this is how you should do it. Look at John's banner, okay? Beautiful branding. I love the branding of the business doctor and it looks like an EKG. He's got his website, his phone number, his logo, perfectly branded so that when you land here, you're gonna wanna know more about him. And then underneath, instead of saying sales trainer or coach, he tells you exactly what he does. Eliminating the frustrations of owning a business by providing real business strategies that work in any economy. He's got the gold button. You know that he's serious. So when you look and you see somebody that's in witness protection or you see somebody like John with, this is the perfect headshot, okay? He's got a plain background, he's smiling, and he's wearing a suit. The only thing that <laughs> and that's my wedding photo. <laughs> oh my God. You know, if you wanted to take it one step further, John, uh -huh. I would put a stethoscope on because you are the business doctor. That's a great idea. And it's a terrific prop. So just take the picture and throw, you know, or even Photoshop it on with a stethoscope. And then when we jump over and look at John's about section, right? I help businesses achieve results faster. And then it goes into third party proof. It talks about what he's done. How many of you watch a movie, go to a restaurant, hire a plumber or anything without checking out what other people have said? I don't even buy anything on Amazon without reading their reviews. Now, so, you know what's really, uh, what you, and I'll just interrupt you real quick, is sure, I got this strategy specifically from you, I think three or four years ago. Yep. Um, where I had all this verbiage about who I am and how great I am and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, you know what? Ask four or five basic questions, answer it with one simple sentence and put a testimonial from a client. And oh my gosh, uh, my, I think at the time we talked, I was at uh, about 1200 connections and I got to over 4,500 and it wasn't really me going out and asking people to connect. Okay. In fact, probably 90% of those people that have grown it to 4,500 was because of this profile and it became a magnet to attract these people. So that is so awesome. And keeping insane. in mind that you get a limit of the number of people that you can invite, which is 3000. So doing it your way, absolutely brilliant because those people were just being attracted to you because of how you were showing up. Well, you actually, you actually, you and I hopped on the computer and you actually have this up and and so i'm just trying to say to everybody on the screen it's like ask your questions right now about your own profile i guarantee you we're she is more than happy to let you share your screen and give you some code on today's about your own profile so feel free absolutely don't, okay absolutely change my, change my business life for sure that's awesome yeah so you know here's the thing uh, you know, everybody's going to check you out. And on most contact management systems now, most CRMs, you're literally just one click away from somebody's LinkedIn profile. So uh, and I'll never forget the story where I was training a bunch of Keller Williams people. And I asked a question. I said, has anybody here ever lost a listing because of your LinkedIn profile? 
And I had one woman that raised her hand. She said, I'm 75 years old. I've been doing this for over 30 years. And I went on a listing appointment and I knew that they were interviewing another person. And I also knew that I had so much more experience than, than, and I didn't get the listing. And I was so shocked, I called the woman back and I asked her, I said, I'm just curious, why did you not select me? And she said, oh, my son looked at your LinkedIn profile and said, I couldn't hire you. So you just don't know um, who's going to check you out and how that's going to actually turn out for you in terms of whether or not you are the person that they choose. So yeah, in most fact, people... uh, let me kind of sure. reiterate that real quick is back in 2012 through I think the middle of 2014, <laughs> I was doing nothing but sales training, speaking all over the world, training salespeople. And then in October, I switched to business owners, but I had not paid into my LinkedIn profile. And I went to, I got an opportunity to speak at a national conference, be a keynote speaker at this national conference for this sales training organization. And they hit my LinkedIn profile. I had not changed the fact that I and no, I get a you're, call. You're going in and out. I don't know what's oh. happening with your speaker. I said, uh, I get this opportunity to national conference for the sales training organization. And I had not monitored or changed my LinkedIn profile to correctly what I currently do. And so I get a call from the events coordinator going, you can't speak at our conference. And I go, why? And she goes, according to LinkedIn, you're a sales trainer. That makes you a competitor. I was floored. It was like a 5,000 person speaking engagement. They were going to pay me about 25 grand to speak. I was, I was a little mad. <laughs> you think? Lesson that's learned. A, that's an expensive lesson. Make sure that you treat LinkedIn like a, a website is what you taught me and make sure that it's constantly updated and it's con the constant content's constantly fresh. So just wanted to add that as a personal. Yeah, lesson. that's a, that's a powerful lesson because people will check you out and there needs to be consistency. Yeah. So let's talk about the headline for a second. Uh, oops, let me go back, sorry. So the headline, is, and this, I need to update this because as of three days ago, it's now 240 characters. You know, that what, what your headline will do is it will default to your job title if you don't change it. So if your job title says real estate broker, that's what it's gonna say. Well, nobody's gonna look for a real estate broker. Okay, I promise they will check you out. However, you there are real estate brokers that are getting a lot of business from LinkedIn and anybody can get it. But part of it is, does it have keywords? Does it separate you from your competitors? And is it the place where you would introduce your about section? Because that's the part where people are going to read. And the first three lines of that about section are what are is going to get somebody to click my favorite two words on that LinkedIn profile. See more because you want them to read the rest of it. And you're right, John, it is really just, and I'm gonna show, it's just answering several basic questions of what that uh, about section should contain. So you're well, can you kind of give us an example, um, and if someone's a fast typer, even though we're recording this into the chat window, can you give us basically four or five questions that we should be uh, addressing in our, in our summary section? Actually, you'll see that in one of the slides. It's coming right up. So it's already done. So that's going to, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So, so that's your head. So that's your headline. So mm -hmm. let me give you a real life example. Okay. Let's say that you are a real estate agent in Houston, Texas, and you specifically work with buyers. Okay. And yeah. that's what you do. So if you put Houston real estate agent focused on helping buyers. And if you happen to be helping them with their, or relocation, whatever it happens to be, you want to make sure that you put the geographics, if that's important to you, if you have a, book, a brick and mortar. So that headline is going to be absolutely key. Just like in yours, John, it tells the problem that you solve and that's what it should do. And if you can talk about who you serve, so let's just go to the about section because I'm going to show you the examples, but here we go. Does it define what you do and the services you offer? So in your first three lines, it would say what I do. I help business owners who, John, fill in the blank. I help business owners who. 
You would need to unmute. <laughs> All right. So what was the question? So I help business owners who fill in the blank. I help business owners who are under $10 million in revenue increase their revenues by 25% in 90 days with their existing client base. That's what I do. I love that. So the only thing that I would suggest that you change is when you say under 10 million, right? That almost makes people see, you know, if somebody's making six figures, they're going to think, oh, he can't help me, right? Right. So you might want to say, I help business owners who are earning $100,000 or more. I like it. Put the floor, because it's got to be relatable, yeah. right? If a business owner isn't earning $100,000, they're probably not your client. Yep. So if, if that's the cutoff point, what you're doing is you're cutting out all the noise, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I love network marketers and some of them are only making $20,000. Well, that qualifies because it's under 10 million but that's not your client. So you want to highlight your biggest achievements, just like you saw in John's. You want to say what others have said. Another thing that you can put in there is sample client list. That's going to separate you from your competitors. And I want to put a caveat on sample client list. If it's a client list where you think your competitors are going to go and try and get your clients to be their clients, don't list them. Only list those clients that you know, it's kind of like being married. They never leave you. So as an example, I've had the same state farm agent for 35 years. I don't really care whether they raise their rates. They don't. They take such good care of me that I would never leave them. And I'm referring them all the time. And they're probably not the best in terms of cost. But if they wanted to list me as one of their clients, that's great. Any other insurance agent can come after me and I'll say, thanks for calling. I'm with blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's where you put the list of sample clients. If you don't want to put sample clients, put the industries. These are the industries. So like for you, John, there's probably sample industries that you work with. And there's probably industries that you don't work with. So you want to be as specific as possible. The other thing that's very important in your about section, do not write it in third person because we don't talk about ourselves in third person and stay away from the word I, okay? I, 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 I. People don't wanna know that. You wanna break it down. Service is offered, what other people think, what makes me different. And then, this is my favorite part of the about section. Tell people something about you that visitors can relate to. So one of my clients is a land banker. There is nothing sexy or fun about land banking. However, she used it, and it's a retirement strategy. She actually has been doing land banking as a retirement strategy for many, many years. And with the proceeds of what she did, she started an orphanage in Vietnam. And so she has that on, you know, on her profile, and that's what people relate to. You don't have to go start an orphanage. Maybe you just like to travel. Maybe you're a gardener. Maybe you like to bird watch. It doesn't matter. Think of it as walking into somebody's office, looking on the wall and saying, oh, wow, you like golden retrievers. Just something that people can relate to. Um, this is a sample of just how powerful it can be. So Nicole is an event planner. And I love your story, John, about how you lost that. I'm sorry that you lost it, but it's a great example of losing that keynote. Nicole is an event planner and her LinkedIn profile basically showed her as a wedding planner because that's what she had done in the past, as was her website. And somebody told her about um, an engagement for a pharmaceutical company, which she had a lot of experience with, but her profile didn't show it. So they said, look, all they're going to consider is your LinkedIn profile and your interview. And she was in a panic because this was on a Wednesday and Monday was the day was the deadline that she had to get everything in. So I upgraded her LinkedIn profile and she made $30,000 based on LinkedIn and the fact that she knew that's what they were looking at. So again, you know, this is a very, very, very powerful platform and it can make the difference between five figures of income that you would not normally have made. And John, I bet you could say that that's true for you as well, right? So, Think about it this way, perception is everything. And a lot of times we have blind spots. Blind spots are we don't know what we don't know. And I love this slide because 
Um, last year, I didn't realize that I needed cataract surgery. I thought I was seeing just fine. And one day my friend who I was driving with said, hey, Rhonda, pull over, I'm gonna drive your car. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, you know, this is worse than texting and driving. You can't see the lights. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you have cataracts and you don't even know it. So I pulled over, she was doing the driving and I went to a cataract surgeon and guess what happened? Oh my God, the world was in 3D. I couldn't believe that I had been looking through this lens. It's the same lens with LinkedIn. A lot of times we don't realize how people perceive us or we're not aware that we haven't updated our profile. So when somebody you know, takes you know, 10 to 30 seconds to look at your profile, what do they see? If they're not getting the answers to their questions, who are you, what do you do? What do other people think of you? And most yeah. important, how can I reach you? I see so many profiles that do not have an email, a phone number, a contact information, a call to action. What do you want people to do when they get to your profile? Do you want them to go to a webinar? Do you want them to book an appointment on your calendar for a discovery call? Do you want them to email you? What do you want them to do? People move at the speed of direction. So it's yeah. very, very important. Well, and and one more thing uh, sure. to, to kind of add to that is, <clears throat> um, when I added the uh, the contact connect with me, one of the things I found is one of the powerful things I implemented is I implemented an online appointment setting system. So there's lead, there's you can book dot me. There's all kinds of online calendars that will integrate uh, Exchange, Outlook, all that stuff. Highly, highly recommend that when you put the call to action profile, that you have an online calendaring system that they can easily book an appointment with you. And again, clients have gotten because I've made it super simple for them to connect with me and not have to play phone tech. That's a great point. That's absolutely awesome. And, you know, I find that a lot of the clients that I work with are a little bit reluctant to put their calendar system on LinkedIn because what they find, especially now, and it's changed a little bit, is that they get people that will book an appointment because they want to sell you. So what the alternative to that is, is when somebody connects with you, when you send them a thank you message to say, hey, John, thanks so much for connecting with me. You know, I'd love to jump on a virtual cup of coffee with you. And here's the magic words. Let's keep it in the no sale zone. So they know they're not gonna be sold to. Here's a link to my calendar. Love to have that virtual cup of coffee. Now it's not out there for the world to see, right? But it is out there so that if somebody does want to connect with you. So again, I love your approach. You're, you're open. You're so receptive. You're such a people person. You know, you talk to people and that's awesome. There are other people that are a little bit more reserved and they don't want to put it out there. So use it in your messaging. But yes, it is one of the best tools you could ever use to keep your calendar full. Yeah, and a couple of things that you uh, pointed out to, because that's what I found when I first implemented that, I've got all kinds of people that were trying yeah. to sell me something. And so what you could do on any online uh, appointment calendar is you can make certain questions mandatory. So yeah. in my case, I make call mandatory. I make um, the, the, the call mandatory. Give them access to 10 to 15 mandatory. <laughs> Yeah. Great. No, that's, that is a fabulous strategy. It really is. And what it does is it keeps out the tire kickers, the people that just want to waste your time. Yeah. Because if they're not going to take the time to fill it out, you don't want to talk to them. You need mm -hmm. to know what the agenda is. Yeah. And so for uh, kind of the sake of time is, uh, I know we got started a little bit late, so we're going to go a little bit later. But the title of what we're talking about today is how to turn LinkedIn into a lead generating machine. And the first part that we talked about with Rhonda that Rhonda's talked about is in order for it to become a lead generating machine, the first place you got to start is with your profile. You have to make sure that it's, it is attractive. When people land on your profile, it is such a magnet that they're like, whoa, I've got to stop and look. And they get so engrossed in your profile, they want to connect with you. And so kind of switching uh, gears here a little bit, what are some of the things, okay, so our, everybody's taking all the, uh, all the advice and stuff, and, 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 and I know that we got Rhonda here, but I got some great news and I'm gonna announce, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you a preview on this and put this in your calendar. On the 7th of July, about 2 p.m. Pacific time, 
Rhonda and I are going to go live for about two and a half, three, maybe even four hours. And we're going to go deep into LinkedIn. We're going to go deep into lead generation. We're going to go deep into referral systems. Uh, by the time we're said and done, we're probably going to have a 130, 140 page ebook and everybody's going to get the recording and we'll put it out. This is everybody on this call we're going to give you free access to that webinar because that webinar ultimately is going to be a paid for event, but we're going to give everybody on this call and everybody that listens to the recording through Harpeth Chamber a free ticket. So uh, don't feel like you're missing out on something today because I'm interrupting a lot, <laughs> okay, because we only got a certain amount of time, but I want to make sure that we hit on. Now, here we are. Let's say Laura, Kat, um, Amy, the people on this call, let's just say they've taken all the advice so far, got their LinkedIn profile dialed. Everything is great. Some of the things that now they can do on a daily basis to start generating interest and connecting with their perfect clients. So the, one of the best things to do, and I'm a big fan, John, and I know you are as well, of using the paid version of LinkedIn, Sales mm -hmm. Navigator and Premium. And I like Sales Navigator. So one of the things that you want to do every day is you want to look at who looked at your profile. Because those are people that typically may not connect with you, but they're good prospects for you. So that's one of the first things that you do every day and say, okay, who's looked at my profile? And if they haven't connected with you, then send them a message and say, hey, John, I noticed you did a drive-by of my profile. Curious, what was it that caught your eye? It looks like we share some common connections, some common interests, would love to connect. So that's one way, okay? The second way is, um, and this is my favorite, and it's free is posting. Every single day, 80% of what you post should just be motivational and inspirational. That's it, motivational and inspirational. So find a quote, find a picture, and put a question with it, okay? And interact with other people's um, posts. So every day, go out and find 10 people to like, comment, and share their posts, and post your own. So how does this convert for you into appointments, into leads? When people start to like your post and comment on them, you have the ability to click and see every single person that liked your post, every single person that commented, and then you can flip over to their profile, one click. And so let's say, for example, John, you liked a post that I put out, okay? We've been connected for three or four years. We haven't had any interaction for a while. I would send you a message. Now, what I like to do is send a message using my phone, which has an audio portion to it. So I'll just press talk and say, hey, John Pyron, thank you so much for liking my post about the power of giving today. You know, we haven't spoken for a while. I would love to know what's going on in your world. Um, how's it going with COVID? If you're up for it, let's have a virtual cup of coffee. I'll put a link right below how you can book time for my call. And I promise, let's keep it in the no sales zone. Best regards. One out of four will book an appointment. How much easier could it be whether you do that in a verbal message, a video message, or just a regular message? What do you think of that strategy, John? You're muted. Well, uh, absolutely love the strategy. So, it's, it's all about producing great content given, and I agree 100%, 80% of what you need, do, need to do is for free. Um, I've learned over the many, many years now, you give, the more you're going to get in return. And it's all about attention, especially in today's world. So people go, okay, well, what do I post? Well, what did you actually learn today? Yeah. Life, in business, through your kids. You know, it's like if you go to my Facebook um, uh, file last night, Facebook Live for 15 minutes, and it was because I learned three or actually four lessons just personally about the power of being others by their, by their, by not using the book by its cup. And my kid landed it at the table, and I'm like, I'm just inspired, man. I got to go teach people. <laughs> you know? And it got uh, well over three or 400 views, but it added that to people's life. So all marketing's good, both and good, but getting attention 
putting out posts every single day and making sure that your profile is dialed is going to attract. And then just take getting in, into an engaging conversation, right? Absolutely. So it's like, it's like uh, people forget that social media, they forget the social part. And that's so true. You know, and I'll tell you, I posted something about, I think it was like maybe two weeks ago and it was just a cute little picture. Right. And it, it said so it, in one side, it had a picture of a husband and wife in bed. And then the other picture was the husband alone with a picture of the mirror of his wife. Right. And it was sort of, it had something to do with, you know, sometimes the grass isn't greener on the other side. You don't know what you have until you lose it. And so I, you know, posed a question along with that little picture. And then I shared just a little bit of my personal story. And I said, you know, this is really powerful advice. Since I was one of the lucky ones that got a second chance and remarried my ex-husband. And I got probably, uh, the number of views aren't as, as important as the engagement. I went over 5,000 views, but the views are a billboard. What really got it was that I was up to almost 400 likes and you know probably about 80 comments and what as a result of that a lot of people didn't know that i had gotten divorced much less remarried because they were people that i had connected with back in 2010 and it opened up conversations so you're absolutely right john sharing you know a little bit of the personal but again asking a question so if you've read a great book you listen to a great podcast put it out there and say what great books have you read you know, ask for interaction or use what you suggest. You know, here's three things I learned from my kids that can be applied to life. What are the things you've learned from your kids, right? They're our greatest teachers. Yeah, I mean, um, from dogs, I mean, really what inspired me was uh, I was having this conversation with my kid about uh, not, uh, you know, judging people. Okay, in love people regardless unconditionally, and then I looked over, I glanced over to my dog, uh, gold retriever AJ is just standing there. I go, give you an example, Preston. That dog right there loves you regardless. <laughs> okay, and like just the lessons we learn in life. Think about it this way: even though it's LinkedIn, even though people look at it as a business platform, every person on there is a human being, and they all go through the same struggles that we uh, that we have. And the more authentic you are, and the more real and human you are, the more you attract people that are going to resonate with you. Absolutely. And one of the benefits that happens when you do what you're saying is you're going to get other people that will start sharing your posts. Mm -hmm. So that's when it starts to go viral. And that's a very cool thing because then when they share, you're going to see second level, which are kind of like your second cousins, people that you share connections in common with. And they're going to, they're people that are new to you. So now you're going to look at their profile and, and you can acknowledge them and connect with them because they took the time to hit the like button. So mm -hmm. posting is one of the coolest things that you can do. And it's free. It's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. So when I went out the email blast promoting today's call the subject line that i put in the email said can i borrow your cell okay and then the first part of the email said can i borrow your cell phone so i can get all your contacts what would you say and so i've taught this in front of an audience and every time i ask the audience i'll pick somebody out in the front row or whatever and go you know do you and i know each other prior to this talk they go nope i go uh, so I don't know you, you don't know me, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's speak. Can I, I'm just curious. Okay. Like a nice guy. If you wouldn't mind borrow your cell phone room and just download all your contacts would be all right with you. He goes, he's looking around. He's like, absolutely not. <laughs> and I go, I go, but here's the good news. If I connect with you on LinkedIn, chances are, all the important contacts that I want from your phone are on your profile. And so here's one, I either learned it from you or somebody else, but when you connect with your existing client on LinkedIn, you connect with a power partner on LinkedIn. One of the most powerful strategies I have used to make literally millions of dollars losing LinkedIn since 2007 when I started is I tell, I ask my client, I say, hey, would you mind 
so I like you, you like me, I'm doing a great job for you. I want more clients just like you. Would you mind, would it be okay if I go on to your LinkedIn profile and did a search on people just like you and, and actually connect with them and just say, hey, you and I both know Fred and Fred's a great guy. He's a client of mine. And I thought since I only know Fred to connect with professional people and, you know, I would add you to my name. You know, are you open to that? That script right there, 90% conversion rate for me when I do it. That's brilliant, Sean. That is really brilliant. And it's one of the fastest ways for people that want to scale up if they don't have that 501, the magic number that LinkedIn says makes you an all-star, that is a brilliant strategy. And most of the time, because there's a common connection there, they will just hit accept. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, so one of the things I know pretty much everybody on this, uh, with the exception of a few on this live call is, you know, feel free, go to my profile. So right now I have a little over 4,500 connections and, you know, Mike, you know, do a search, look up your target client, look up your perfect client and say, Hey, I noticed you and I both know John Pyron. Okay. I can Pyron speak John gave me permission to say, Hey, you know what? Uh, yeah. I'll have to connect with you. Okay. However you want to word that, um, you know, go and find your perfect clients. I tell you, if you just spend 15 minutes a day doing this best practice, the compound effect will start taking over. You'll blow up your LinkedIn profile, especially if you have a, a, a magnet type profile, and you're going to get more and more of the perfect clients that you want. You know, John, I couldn't agree more. And I would add one thing. I, I call it my practice called 10 before 10. So if you do that with 10 people before 10 a.m., you will get explosive results. Just 10, 10 people. Be, 10 before 10. I'm going to add that here. 10. Be, that's a great 10 strategy. Before 10. Touch 10 people. And if you're in a position where you have a lot of people and you've never really talked to them, you know, use that same kind of a strategy. Go to your own connections, actually search within your own connections. So let's say you want to do more business in your own backyard. Go search the people that are already in your city that are connected to you and just reach out to them and reconnect and say that and make that same offer and say, you know, we haven't even spoken. We really have, we've been connected, but you know, I'd love to be able to let you use my name and connect with anybody that I'm connected to, you know, and, and send an invitation saying it's by virtue of this connection. So it, it's so easy to do that within your own backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the, probably the best, I learned from a friend of mine, Tim Morgan, about two and a half years ago is he and I were, were meeting once a month just to do reciprocal referral relationship back and forth. Marketer guy. And we did that for a year. We get together for coffee and, and, and so he came up with this one idea. He says, hey, would you mind if I go to your LinkedIn profile and connections and just people a connection request and say, Hey, uh, John Py you and John Pyron are connected here on LinkedIn. Uh, and John recommended I connect with you. Okay. And I'm going, that is a brilliant script. And I go, yeah. I go, well, first of all, I got to make sure I endorsed him. <laughs> ensure that I'm okay. I'm doing that. But I said, Dude, I have no issues with you telling every single person I know that I recommended you connect with them. Okay. So he did that strategy and calls me back. I think it was like two or three weeks later. He goes, dude, I got 12 new clients over this last month just with that one strategy. I'm going, I'm going, crap. I should have thought of it myself. <laughs> and so I gave that to a couple of my clients and um, one of them was Strativa Rock Palm, uh, owns a technology company. Then I gave it to Alan Reeves of Mouse Calls. Uh, and the same result is, so here's the principle. If you have somebody that you're a network partner with right now, okay, one of the most powerful things that you guys could do since you already refer business back and forth anyways and you already know, like, and trust each other, 
take a leap, give them permission, say, Hey, you have my permission to go to my LinkedIn profile and anybody on there you want to connect, just tell them flat out. I recommended that they connect with you and just watch that magic happen. It is incredible when there's an endorsement like that. And you know, John, I'd add one thing that may even make that more powerful because that's brilliant. Make sure that you have written a recommendation for that person and they wrote one for you. Mm -hmm. If people look at the recommendations, the endorsements, people don't pay as much attention to. The endorsements are used for another purpose, mm -hmm. but the recommendations are so powerful. So if there's a recommendation that's reciprocal, then there's even more power behind that um, reaching out using that, that script. Yeah. What, uh, what are some of the things? So, I mean, you've grown your profile to 25,000 people. And, and so what are some of the strategies that you've used over the years to grow your, your connection list to that? So one of the things that I've done is I do a lot of speaking. And right now we're all in a virtual world. So even on a virtual platform on Zoom, I invite people to connect with me and you get your personal URL, just like you have yours. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you invite people because they always put the chat when you're in a virtual platform. And if you're in a live platform and you're using slides, say, you know what, I would love to connect with you. And if there is somebody that I know that I can introduce you to, you know, reach out to me and put it out there. And whenever I speak, whether it's on a podcast, on a virtual platform, it doesn't matter, or I'm in front of a live room, I use my LinkedIn pretty much as my website and I invite people to connect with me. And that's one of the fastest ways to grow. Now, one of the things that you want to do after somebody, and this is a little bit counterintuitive and just like the way you talk about what you're doing, John, which is brilliant, by the way, you also want to use this strategy. So let's just say, Vicki, you send me a connection request after we get off of this uh, call. And it's, you know, it's very simple. It's linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash and my name, Rhonda L. Sure. You've sent me a connection request. I'm going to click accept, but then I'm going to send you a message and say, Vicki, thank you so much for, uh, for sending me the connection request. I'm so glad we had an opportunity to meet on this Zoom webinar. I'd love to know more about you and if there's anybody I can introduce you to or how I can be a resource. Here's a link to my calendar if you want to set up a call. Again, thanks so much for taking the time to send me an invitation. So it's kind of like a reverse cold call, yeah. right? You ever yeah. have people that cold call you? I used to do that all the time. They would cold call me and I would turn around and sell them on my stuff because I yeah. was so annoyed that they did it. But yeah. when you have somebody that's invited, so that's one way to grow your network, right? Mm -hmm. The other way is be very strategic. So if you know, like I showed on the side, who it is that you is your ideal client, right? You want to mm -hmm. know who they are, all of that. Do a search and send a specific connection request. Not, never, never, never just hit connect. Never. Always personalize it, even on your phone. Always personalize it. Mm -hmm. And then when they do connect, send that thank you message. And do not make it a sales pitch. Think of it as a first date. Would you bring somebody home on the first date and say, hey, I just want to show you, this is our house. This is how many kids we're going to have. No, it's a slow dance. Make yeah. sure that you're courting them because nobody wants to be sold. Everybody wants to buy, but nobody wants to be sold. So whether they extend the invitation or you do. And the other way is, you know, I, I always say, make your ask, A-S-K, bigger than your butt, right? So ask people, who do you think you should be connected to? Is there anybody that you know that you think I should meet? And who do you want to meet that I can make an introduction to you? So I yeah. think that's one of the fastest ways. And, and it's what I love about you, John, is you really embrace giving. You know, you truly are, you know, giver's gate, right? And mm -hmm. that's really the plat that's where I come from. Think of LinkedIn as a platform for service, mm -hmm. not for selling. It's yeah. always going to come back. Yeah, Amy has a question. Amy's, uh, Amy's got a question. I do. Okay, so I have a LinkedIn profile of my own, and I'm also the admin for the Chambers LinkedIn profile. Um, so we haven't been utilizing LinkedIn a lot. Um, we typically focus on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and that's just a product of having, you know, the capacity to manage multiple uh, social media platforms. So I have, you know, since we've been talking about LinkedIn so much the last several times I've been on with John, I've tried to start, you know, 
upping our game a little bit on LinkedIn with the Chamber. So my question is, which profile do I need to be sharing on? I mean, I have a lot of followers on my LinkedIn, but the Chamber has very few followers and I can't even find out who they are. I've been trying to figure that out for two days. It says well, I have- Let me ask you a question, Amy. When you say that you're the admin in the Chamber, is it a personal profile for the Chamber or is it a company page? Um, it should be a company page. Okay. So, so if you can uh, share your screen, Amy, and uh, we can yeah, take that a would look be great. at it real quick. Share your personal page, Amy. Okay. Um, I've got too many screens. Hold on a minute. Can you see this one? Yeah. All right, so, so here's me. And I've got a blue banner. I've got to fix that. Okay. So, um, you know, I've got more than 500 connections and my personal one. Yep. And then here's the chambers. And uh, actually, now I have to go to the chambers. Um, page and I can look at it as an admin or I can look at it as a member um, and I don't really know if you know if I should be consistently trying to reach out to potential members through my page or through the chambers page that is a great question go back to first of all the chambers page definitely needs a facelift you need your you need your uh, you have no image on there yeah and um, and actually I think that you probably haven't Got your about section, but that's okay. Um, go back to your page for a second. Now, in addition to working for the chamber, you have another position, correct? No. This is your full-time job? Lord, yes. Okay, awesome. So you can be, remember that LinkedIn is a B2B platform. It doesn't mean that B2C business doesn't happen, but it's a B2B business. So if your profile was upgraded okay, to where it told potential members what the benefits are of being part of your chamber. So if I said, what are the benefits of joining your chamber? What would you say? I would uh, say that we are um, a relationship driven organization that of more than 260 business professionals in Bellevue and we create, uh, you know, relationship building opportunities, networking, education, uh, discounts on vendor space at the Bellevue picnic, cool. uh, VIP experiences, I mean, all kinds of stuff like okay. that. Cool. So what if your about section said, imagine being part of an organization where you have, you have instant access to 260 people that you can reach out to, to share, you know, to interact with, potentially do business with, get VIP discounts, so what you're really doing is you're talking about the benefit of being a member. And then in that about section, if you click see more, you can talk about benefits offered because being a, be being a member of your chamber offers a lot of benefits, doesn't it? You get uh, right here, I'll go down, see it says see more right there. Third line, up, 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 uh, go down a couple sentences. Uh, okay, see where it says uh, innovative, results driven and then the second line right at the end where it says all ability right there click oh yeah okay so that whole section should talk about um you know our ideal members are because you know who your members are they're the real estate people they're the financial services people right so you need to let people know hey if you fall into any of these categories you would be great as a member right and then what's the call to action well you want them to call you or you want to send them to your website to fill out you know, how they can become a member. So you want to talk about the benefits of membership. And in terms of how you're going to reach out, you can reach out to people just the way that John and I were talking about, which is, hey, uh, Kat, came across your profile, noticed that you're in the travel industry and didn't see um, any chambers as a member of your organization, yet you are in our backyard. Would love to uh, connect with you and explore how we might be able to um, help you grow your business with the chamber. Just that simple. Or if you don't even want to be that direct, just say, hey, you know what? We're both in the same city. I'm with the chamber. I'd love to connect with you. And then have a call to action in the thank you message. If you did 10 people a day, your chamber membership would explode. And here's the secret sauce. You ready? 
How many, ha how many happy members do you have in your chamber? People that are always bringing in new members, about how many? Uh, it's very difficult to get members to recruit other members in my experience. Um, well, do you have members that have been with you a long time? Yeah, I mean, we've got lots of happy members and I think they're very happy with their membership, but that doesn't necessarily translate into them going out and recruiting members for right. the chamber. And I understand that. Um, but what I would say to you is get them to do a testimonial to say, you know what, because I've been a member of the chamber, I have increased my business by X percent. My visibility has increased, blah, blah, blah. If you put that on your profile, it's going to be so much easier for people to want to be attracted to join your chamber. And um, John, you probably would agree with me on this one. When it comes to getting your own members to bring in other members, reach out to them and say, hey, listen, you know what? I need your help. <clears throat> this year, the chamber is looking to really grow. Just wonder if you know anybody that might be a good, you know, that might be interested in joining the chamber that doesn't even know about us. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the good news. Okay. It, it, even well, we already had great news. Here's even oh, greater God. news. So if you can share your screen again, Amy. Oh, I thought you guys were probably tired of looking at it. Nope. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Scroll up all the way to the top. Click on search. Where? Over to Where? the left. Yep. Yeah. Type in Alan Reeves. Click on him. Alan needs an upgrade. Now, the good news is, is and work yeah we got to deal with his profile it's, it's like this is not a good reflection on me as his coach for four years he's in witness protection <laughs> he's in witness he's protection in, he's in witness protection right and so but uh so click on 500 connections okay and go up top where it says all filters Oh, you're showing him the secret sauce, John. <laughs> okay. Um, click on, uh, well, uncheck first. Go over to locations. Or actually go down and hit greater Nashville area. Okay, scroll down. And let's just leave it at that. Hit apply. That 104 people in the Nashville area that you're not connected to. Okay, so here's kind of some homework and Alan will play ball with you on this because he's sponsoring this call. And if he doesn't just call me up and I'll fly out there and give him a wet willy um, is call him up and say, hey, Alan, John Pyron told me to call you. Okay, I'm looking at 448 connections on your LinkedIn and I would be would it be OK if I sent a connection to every single one of them? saying that you recommended I connect with them. Would you be okay with that? And he's going to say yes. Okay. Okay. So you're going to get about 148 new connections over this next week because that script right there will convert at about 86%. And then if you do exactly what Rhonda was talking about, is just get into a dialogue back and forth. Just get to know them, right? Walking into a bar. It's like I'm going to walk up to somebody – you know, if I was single now, I'd walk up and say, you know, hi, you know, we get into a station and I would ask them questions. They're going to ask them questions. I'm going to ask them questions, give me questions. And at some point, all roads lead to, and here's, here's a tip for every single person on this live call. One of the greatest lessons I've ever learned in sales. You want to ask so many questions about the other person until you get to the point where they're going to ask you what you do until they ask you what you do i wouldn't even tell them what you do okay well they can tell simply, by looking at our profile i would simply say hey um you know tell me more about this like if i didn't know you right and i connected with you the very first question i would say is hey uh amy i had a chance to visit your profile and and uh, uh, curious why either one of two ways either you connected with me or I connected with you if I connected with you is I would just basically say hey thanks a lot for my connection out of curiosity what what separates you from everybody else in your space just curious you know that's a great using question. the words curious 
is very powerful. The other thing I want to share with everybody is what I learned a long time ago from my mentor is start keeping a Google Doc or a Word document where you keep you keep a list of scripts. Like when you find a, a, a script that works, use it over and over and over and over and over again. So uh, I have a thing called social media scripts that is a Google Drive a doc because I can, I can edit it. And whenever I use this, any social network and it converts, I'm like, ding, ding, ding. If it converted for that person, it's going to convert for this person. And, and so for a period, I think of nine months last year, I didn't manage Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, any of that. It looked, filled and smelled like I was on there though. But I had a gal in the Philippines doing all of it. And because I had connect, collected all these scripts over time, I just instructed her how to use the scripts. And, uh, and it, was, it was amazing. So that would be a, a homework assignment for everybody here is find somebody that's in your, that would be considered a power partner in your network, make a phone call to them, explain to them the strategy, be willing to allow them to do it with your profile. And I tell you right now, you're going to build your connections on LinkedIn. So we're about out of time. And so what I did for everybody in the chat window, if you have not been to the chat window, Here's kind of a, uh, uh, a tip for any Zoom meeting you're on for the rest of your life, okay? Ask interesting questions that force, forces everybody to put something in the chat window, number one. Number two, if you go down to the bottom of the chat window, you're gonna see three dots, okay? If you click those three dots, there is a, but at the, a thing there called save chat, okay? going to allow you to save the chat and it'll save to your computer on text. Okay. And, and so in today's chat, the reason I'm asking you to do this today is the webinar that we're going to do on July 7th at 2 PM Pacific time, it's paid, for it, but everything I do are going to get to it for free. It's a actual zoom link that I'm going to use for that webinar. Okay. So I want you to grab that. Uh, I will be sending this to everybody that registered um, as well, but feel free to, um, uh, uh, to join that. Uh, and then I'm going to only give you guys this permission. You feel free to invite any guests you want and they'll get free access as well. Okay. Everybody else, when I put the marketing out on this come Monday, it's going to be $40, $49. Uh, and they are only going to get access if they pay the 49 bucks because we're going to create about a two to three hour workshop. It's going to have about a 140 page ebook. It's going to be like LinkedIn on steroids, lead generation on steroids. I mean, it's the timing of this in this market and what's working in today's economy is going to be, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. So um, now the other thing, the other reason you want to save the chat window <laughs> Right, because I've been on some of these Zoom meetings where there's four thousand people, right, and the host is asking these questions, and so I'm sitting there going, and I'm just waiting for the meeting to end. I'm not even paying attention sometimes to what the heck they're talking about. I, I right before they end it, man, I hit save chat, and then I've given it to my assistant, and I said, "You put every single one of these people up on LinkedIn, okay." Every single one of them, you go look them up on LinkedIn and you send them this message. Hey, Joe, it was great seeing you on the webinar today. What was your biggest takeaway? Please accept my connection request. Boom. <laughs> so literally, I think the month of when this whole Zoom thing started happening, the month of March, April, and May, I grew my connections by over 1,200 connections with that strategy right now. It was insane. Uh, hope that hope this has been very helpful for you guys today. Uh, the recording is going to come out um, in the next hour or so. I'm going to give any access to it. Uh, I'm going to have my video editor and and without the edited version. Join us on that live uh, workshop on the seventh of of June of July. 
And I put Amy's uh, LinkedIn uh, profile URL in the chat window as well. If, if you got a lot out of what we talked about today, if you can do us a big favor, connect with us on LinkedIn, go to our, write a recommendation for us. What an authentic recommendation. What was your biggest takeaway? How did we help you out today? Okay. That would be, I would be so grateful. So Rhonda, thank you so much. John, it's been really fun. Time. I really appreciate it. Like we mirror one another and are doing the same things. It's just so awesome. You're a rock star. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. So that's all we have for today. Everybody go out and make it happen. Don't forget to save the chat window real quick before I uh, close this down. Just go up and hit save chat. And, uh, you have it. And thank you with for each your other time. On you bet. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week and a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye.